author of the Perspective book series. I write the voice of Iris Godelova, and I'll be reading the first part of Chapter 2 in Love at First Plight. Only once every cycle is there a day in which one knows that everything is perfectly as it should be. Not long ago, I was certain that the Great Goddess had granted me one of those rare occasions. I was wrong. I wore the lilac gown that had only just been unwrapped from among the dresses that Lord Imri Gadeleva had ordered for me for the warm days that were to come. Through our carefully sculpted and meticulously maintained gardens, I made my way to the stone bench that was nestled among the flowering bushes in perfect view of the main fountain. It wouldn't be long before the space would be filled with the sights and sounds of the masked dancers and musicians attending the traditional mask that Lord Imri held every cycle to launch the hot season, but not yet. For now, I could enjoy the silence and the air, which was just warm enough to allow me to leave my shawl inside and yet cool enough that my skin would never be made to glisten with moisture. Settling onto the bench, I arranged my ample skirt perfectly about me so that its purple ribbon flowed freely behind me and the luxurious silk fabric of the skirt was displayed at its best. Only the very tips of my white boots would be visible. I opened my book, the latest in a series of volumes that Lord Emery had wished me to read, and set about taking in its contents. As far back as I could recall, this was how things were. Nothing seemed to change. I was accustomed to the steady routine of the Gadeleva household, and while it typically brought me comfort, their pendulum-like rhythm now seemed to be counting down the days in which I could remain here. One day, I would marry and have to leave this place where my heart was home. On a perfect day such as this, however, I could forget the curse of time. Well ensconced, I began to lose myself in the words on the pages as the sun came out from behind a fluffy white cloud. It felt warm and natural on my skin, and the thread of a looming freckle drew me from the enchantment of the pages. As I was about to reach down for my parasol, a shadow fell over me. I turned to find its source, but never made the discovery. A hand grabbed my mouth, muffling my screams until a gag could replace it and a bag of coarse fabric could be thrown over my head. I fought as well as I was able, wincing as I heard the sound of my book striking the ground, but my efforts were of no use. I writhed against the cruel hands, but my captor was prepared, and I was not. My wrists and legs were soon tied, and I was tossed over the back of a horse. Bouncing uncomfortably, painfully, terrified that I might fall, I felt the bruises forming on my arms and body. I didn't fall. Instead, I was shaken and bashed about until I succumbed to blessed blackness. When I regained consciousness, the bag had been removed from my head, and the ropes had, that had bound my hands were gone. I tried to raise myself to sit, but an unimaginable agony shot its way through my back. Only the sound of the cane told me that I was being whipped. Curling into a ball, I heard myself crying out with each lash, as though another girl were screaming, and there was nothing I could do to help her. I covered my ears with my hands to muffle the cracking sound of the cane striking my body. The anguish repeated until I could nearly numb to it, sinking into myself and detaching from the sensations of my body. As if the torturer knew that the, his efforts were no longer causing the same degree of suffering, he stopped. Instead, a leather-gloved hand slapped me across the face, knocking me onto my back and to the floor. I twisted as the bruised and welted flesh beneath my gown collided with the rough surface. What followed was only laughter. It started low and rumbling and climbed to a full demonic cackle. I opened my eyes just enough to see the boots of the man moving toward the door, catching only a glimpse of my captor as he left. A glimpse was all I needed to identify him. It was a blessing that I was abandoned. I have heard that to look into the face of Captain Galnar was to see your own torturous death. A tall, lanky man dressed completely in black, his waxen hair was the only feature paler than his skin. His eyes, cruel and hate-filled, were the crimson shade of blood. Only one glance was made in my direction before the rusted hinges cried and the latch gagged into place. His was the last face I had seen, the last I thought I would ever see. I hope you liked my reading of Love at First Plight. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and about the Perspective book series, please subscribe to the channel. Bye!